There it is, the Flute Loop. Welcome back to Sonic Weekly, your source of Sonic the Hedgehog talk, discussion, news, and other assorted conversational tactics once every seven days or so. I am Grant. Not with us this time is Bo. Bo is missing in action this week, as is Smoothies, but the star of the show, out of the shadows and into the spotlight, David the Lurker. David is here. Hi, David. Oh, hi, Grant. Yeah, that's right. I'm here. I couldn't miss this one because I, I can't miss any of them. If I do... I will be attacked with the with the FOMO, right? The fear of missing out. Yes, legally that is true. Right. It's uh... <laughs> you will be attacked mercilessly by the FOMO, dragged out of your car into an alleyway by the FOMO. Hey, a lot of good things to talk about this week. The Knuckles Show is coming out. Whoa! Uh, it's out already by now. By the time you're listening to it, it's not out for us while we're recording. We're going to talk about Knuckles. We're going to talk about Fantasy Star Online. We're going to talk about some hot takes. So let's introduce. Our guests, they have been on the show before. They are our friends. Some of them, one of them is our wife, my wife. It's my <laughs> wife, Ashlyn Anstey. Hi, Ashlyn. Welcome back to the show. Thank you for being here. Wow, what an intro. Oh, Hello. Yeah, yeah great. Uh, and, then, uh, our <laughs> and then our special guest uh, this week, uh, also returning to the show, is Matt Brawley. Hi, Matt. Hey guys, I'm very excited. Uh, I love Knuckles. I love PSO. This is a topic for me. Let's do it. Let's right. do it together. It's, yes, it's funny because when you said some of them, it sounded like you were saying some of them are our friends. Not everyone on the show is our friend. Yeah. And then it was like, no, it's just about. Ashlyn's not our friend. Uh oh. You can be a friend and a wife. Who? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, fine. Everybody on the show is a friend. Everybody on the show is my wife. <laughs> Everybody has equal status. Okay. All right. Well, Thanks, yeah. So Knuckles premieres tonight. Actually, we recorded this on Exciting. Thursday. It, it, it yeah. premieres the 26th. Uh, Ashley and I have just been watching some video game shows. We just finished uh, the first season of Fallout on Amazon Prime. And that was pretty fun. But uh, Knuckles is, you know, it's been getting positive reviews. It, it is green on Metacritic, but he's only in a, a percentage of the show. It has been decided by Twitter or it has been one of the reviewers noted that he was only in 40 something point something percent of the show and so we're kind of adjusting our expectations to you know it's going to be a lot of wade and that's great we love wade sure wade whipple yeah, yeah. but since we don't have a, a an episode to chew over yet maybe we can just uh commune in our love of knuckles the echidna matt i know knuckles is maybe your favorite character in the sonic franchise yeah, i think i think saying he's my favorite is not an exaggeration i love me some knuckles it's partly why I have such a difficult time with Shadow, because he basically came in and replaced Knuckles. It's very much like a Piccolo, Vegeta situation, but I love Knuckles. Uh, I can't believe there's an entire high-budget, I would say modestly budgeted television show dedicated to this character. I think it's absolutely bizarre. I think it's bizarre to see him with that cowboy hat from the OVA. I can't believe yeah. we live in this dimension, basically. <laughs> and that the series is going to be about a bowling tournament. And it's about bowling, mm -hmm. yeah. And that also, uh, better. Pacamac is in it. Is that how you say his name? Uh, I think so. Pat Pachacamac, Pachacamac, something like that. That can't be right. But I, I, I always used to say Pachacamac, Pachacam, Pachacamac, Pachac. What did you used to say? Pot, pot, uh, pot. Calling the kettle black is what I would call him. Uh, <laughs> I see. Gotcha. Yeah. I see. Right. No. Yeah. Pachacamac. Pachacamac. Catch a no comment. <laughs> Patchouli. His name, I believe, is Patchouli the Echidna. Patchouli Pacham. Right. Oh, he's in the show. I already forgot that he's in yeah, the yeah. show. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm excited. I think he's I think he's uh he's voiced by Doc Brown too, right? <laughs> Supposedly. Yeah. I guess we have we've 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 been focusing a lot on on the Wade family, but I mean I guess we're dealing with Knuckles' family to some degree, unless it is all in his head. Also, it is a sequel, right, to Dodgeball. It takes place in the same <laughs> universe. It, it Be definitely looks like it does. Yeah. Well, <laughs> right, because it's got ESPN Ocho. Oh, right. Which I think has only existed in Dodgeball, a true underdog story, which I guess is what Wade is in this. That's why it's a, it's a sequel in spirit and in form. Uh-huh. Is Dodgeball <laughs> a Paramount movie? Are they allowed? Is this a rights issue? Is this a... Oh, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Oh, did you look it up? Actually, it's Fox, which Fox is owned by Disney. So maybe we can get some lawyers on this call and uh, get them to throw a fit and prevent Knuckles from premiering. Well, Disney owns ESPN, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I've seen Dodgeball years ago. So you're telling me that this uh, channel, The Ocho, is like specifically referencing Dodgeball in the show? Uh, yeah, because at the end of the movie, Dodgeball, it is... 
the the final big dodgeball. Yeah, yeah I remember. It's been I remember, forever. I remember. It is. It's televised on ESPN Ocho because the one guy, the Ocho, yeah, 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 is sad. <laughs> I guess. That, wait, Vince Vaughn is about to leave, and then he's he's watching them fail at the oh, bar, right, and then right, and then what's his face? Lance Armstrong, yeah, pe- gives him a pep talk. He's like, "Okay, I'll be the best dodgeball person after ever." Of course, this was before everything with with Lance Armstrong. Maybe not quite right, uh, earning doping, all everything. Doping, uh, yeah, controversy, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah damn so knuckles david what do you knuckles, think about yeah. uh, knuckles <laughs> as a character but it's true I, so matt yeah. i mean is, is but you know it is the 30th anniversary of sonic 3 and sonic 3 and knuckles and sonic yeah. and knuckles and knuckles yeah. and the sonic 30th? 2 and spheres. It's the 30th years, anniversary, but this is the year of shadow this is fearless the year of shadow it is fearless the year of shadow yes and this this knuckles show too we must remember was like greenlit hot off the success of sonic 2 so like we are experiencing yesteryear's decisions today. Damn, <laughs> that is true. That's also the theme of Fallout, the show mentioned earlier. Oh, good show, good show. Yeah. The, the first episode is excellent. Excellent. Right. Is, is Knuckles in Fallout? He should be. Yeah, he could be. He's a mutant, right? <laughs> yeah. According to Archie Comics, he's a mutant. That's true. He is. <laughs> they're all mutants. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now they're wow. all. Well, now they're all furry space aliens. But whatever. Well, maybe, do you guys? So, yeah, wait, maybe, so do maybe. you guys have like? hopes for this show like what do you are you gonna watch it first of all are you for sure gonna watch it i will for sure be watching it which means ashlyn will you be watching with me <sighs> that's a yes. that's a sigh of agreement if i've ever heard one i mean it's fine yeah i'll 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 watch and do other stuff while i watch it that's, Here's I my think thing that's the best knuckles. way <laughs> i like knuckles i think i decided because i didn't know that shadow was replacing knuckles why don't they just get rid of tails? Like, why can't Whoa. it just? Whoa! That... <laughs> I think that's the first hot take. That is that, that that's, is that's the first take. one. So we're gonna keep we're gonna keep a tr- we'll keep track. That's one thing. Um, okay, so <laughs> tails and knuckles and shadow they fulfill different roles right knuckles was originally a rival to sonic and tails yeah and then shadow became sonic's rival and he was like bad guy turned good guy and they've done that twice actually they've done yeah. that multiple times but which is going to be the big challenge of movie three then why can't it just be three sassy rivals yeah. that's actually the tagline for sonic three three <laughs> sassy rivals three times the sass <laughs> yeah i have a well, feeling shadow will not be sassy in the movie we talked about this last week how, how do you guys feel about uh keanu as shadow does that uh move any needles or is that just kind of like sure they needed an actor why not <laughs> it sounds it sounds good it sounds good yeah right. it sounds it sounds correct and in the same tier i was like sort of jim carrey and what this movie is going for it seems good ashlyn you love both shadow the hedgehog and John Wick. I think it's the best casting that's ever been made. Ever. I didn't want to see the movie, but now I do. Because we love Keanu. Ashlyn, did you see the second movie? Yeah. Did Grant Multiple make you times. see it in theaters? <laughs> Two times. I would have seen it anyways. I would have oh, seen really? It really? Okay, 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 okay. You think you would have seen it anyways? You think if you hadn't met me, that yeah, you would have right? still seen Sonic the Hedgehog 2 in theaters? <laughs> I don't believe it. I don't believe that. Right. Maybe. But, I mean, it, really? it was well-liked. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was a lot like. I, I saw it in theaters alone, man. I mean, there was plenty yeah. of there was plenty of people in there, but I mean, I saw it, yeah, by myself. By yourself? Oh. Well, why did you, <laughs> yeah, Mrs. You Matt? know, I I spent a lot of political capital to get her in the seat for movie one, and Politi- I just didn't have any this time around. <laughs> <laughs> political capital. <laughs> political capital. Yeah. I don't know why that tickles me so. I would say I feel like they need to really give us a Amy or a Rouge for, for I agree. movie three. That's the thing. I like Knuckles, but there's yeah. just too many boys. It's a sausage fest. Yeah. Ding, ding, ding. Boys. I think that's a second hot take. Let's <laughs> keep track of these hot takes. I think, I think that's, that's, that's true, though, especially as Shadow is, is cresting as he is coming. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely feels like, okay, how are they going to make sure this is not a Knuckles repeat? Which I'm sure he will. He'll be on a motorcycle and he'll probably say uh, some bad words. Oh, in the damn. Movie. Or probably say damn. Hell. Yeah, I have right. a feeling. Get the damn hell out of my way. This will be a character who, who watched a teenage girl get shot in the back as opposed to Knuckles who <laughs> whose family died off screen. They just never came home. Right. So yeah. as far as he knows, they were like... We're just gonna uh, go get some cigarettes, Knuckles. You stay here. Right, right. Was that was that in the movie? He like came home and everyone was gone. 
Well, no, in 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 yeah, in two we see the flashback where yeah. everyone is going to fight. Uh, I guess presumably Longclaw, but his dad says, "You stay here. Oh, You're and too he was young like, to and fight." They never came back, or and something. they never came back. Oh, so. that's sad. Poor Knuckles. Yeah. See, if if you had gone with someone, then you could have reacted, and it would, it would have been cemented in your mind. <laughs> then I would instead of focusing it. on the fact that you're lonely, <laughs> like Knuckles, uh. <laughs> deeply, deeply relatable character. No, but um, uh, I I I love Knuckles. I think he should have his own game. I I've been uh gunning for that for a long time. Like you know, yeah. a spinoff. Oh, he has Knuckles Chaotix, I guess. But I mean, like. A new game right uh were you a, gonna a, say a good game a good one uh, well you know yeah. i can't get too greedy ashlyn but <laughs> you know something I, I i think his gameplay style has always lent itself to exploring and he's got fists so punching i he can glide he's got good mobility options i just think he's sort of a shoe in maybe after the series maybe maybe if nothing else the series will raise the q index I, you know what q I rating think, for knuckles i think that there is only one direction for knuckles popularity after this movie and it is down 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 <laughs> uh, because of this because is the of peak Shadow. of knuckles yeah well, i'm sure I'm, I'm, I, dude this is it i think the idea that he got a six episode spinoff to himself is kind of a miracle and it's only because you know a certain someone hasn't shown up yet i yeah. firmly believe this yeah that's true it is it's been said a million times but it is Pretty amazing that we're getting both Knuckles and Sonic 3 in the same year, the 30th anniversary. It's wild. One of the games, Sonic 3 Knuckles. It is a wild moment for this movie franchise, and it will be really interesting to see if it if it trends up from here or trends down. This is a really critical moment for something we all care very deeply about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, the movies and the shows, I feel like, are a, a, a bonus I because I still kind of am in that mindset of before that first movie came out, where the feeling was like, oh, this is going to be a disaster. And then when it wasn't, right. when it was pretty good, right. it was like, oh, the, so it's it's kind of all just been like a gravy ride. Yeah, That's yeah, totally. No, these movies are like the six uh, six out of tens of our dreams, like sort of. Like they're <laughs> they're like the best version of this thing that it could ever have been. And they're way more successful than you could have ever have hoped that's for sure it feels like the right time for them yeah it is the right time it is the right time and when you and when you look at what fallout the show is doing for the sales of the games it's no wonder that like frontiers did so well right like it's it's crazy this stuff goes hand in hand like it's 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 not um it's not a coincidence it's a corporate synergy it that's is a, it is that's... it's literally what everybody wants from from these things <laughs> it's working it is all right so we might we might get that that chaotix too. We wow, yes, chaotix too. 3D, fully 3D. I, hey, I'm, I'm down. <laughs> uh, Ashlyn, you did not come to discover Knuckles in the year 1994. No. Do you remember when it was when you first learned that there was a red echidna named Knuckles that was part of the in this alternate universe where you're going to see Sonic the Hedgehog two movie without me? When in either timeline do you discover that Knuckles exists? Oh, I think probably not for a long time, mm -hmm. really. I think what's sort of surprising about, because Knuckles is a very popular fan character. You know, I work in animation where, you know, people have Knuckles, oh. dogs wow. called Knuckles. Kids named Knuckles. <laughs> yeah, kids named Knuckles, wives called Knuckles. <laughs> Knuckles tends to be sort of the first character thrown under the bus, I noticed, by very casual fans of Sonic. So people will be like, oh yeah, I like Sonic and Tails. And then all oh, the friends, ah, uh, they get too much. With, but it's like, oh, why didn't you just include Knuckles as the ones that are good? It's a great question that your perception that he's in hardly any of the games. I feel like he's in all the games, like past Sonic 3. I feel like you can't get rid of the guy. He, until like very decisively like sonic unleashed or something yeah Un unleashed is the is the slash point although i guess originally is this is this public knowledge i don't remember anymore knuckles was supposed to be an un unleashed as a just a talking head oh i didn't know that no i didn't know that either Oh, well, maybe that's not public knowledge. Uh, <laughs> I, I can tell you what his dialogue would have been. It would have been like, whoa, Sonic, is that you? That's literally what it would have been. That's like how everyone treats Sonic in that game. He just shows up right. as a werehog. Oh, and punch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I could show you how to punch. I think my favorite iteration of Knuckles, hot take incoming, is watching Sonic Boom, where Knuckles is just a, a himbo. <laughs> oh, yeah. I feel like the the fan uh, community had kind of an arc with Boom Knuckles where we hated it, we couldn't stand it, but then mm -hmm. when you heard him and the comedy was landing, he was great. 
he was actually he he made out like a bandit from Sonic Boom. Knuckles did. It's like the most personality he's ever had. Right. You asked earlier, Matt, what our expectations are for the show, and I think really if the Knuckles series is funny, mm-hmm. and there is a lot of comedic talent uh, on camera, behind the camera, that I do think it will be funny on par with, and, and Sonic Boom is like par for that. So if it's as funny as Sonic Boom, then I'm I'm pretty happy, uh, and that's that's my expectation and hope. I think that's very uh, good of you and generous. From my from my point of view, the movies, and I enjoy a lot about them, I would say the comedy is probably one of the weakest parts of them. And so I'm a little skeptical that this show will, in fact, be funny. I, I remember, like, the first two movies, it really was the improv-based comedy, or improv-esque, I should say. It was definitely written based comedy that I was sort of always a little like, ooh, I don't know about this. This isn't really playing great. Whereas like, I thought the character work was pretty good in those two movies. So I'm very curious to see if like this show actually is funny and will get some chuckles out of me. We shall see. It'll ring some chuckles out of you. It, it may squeeze some yucks out. We'll see. <laughs> some knuckles chuckles. Uh, some knuckles chuckles. I'm I would... like Sonic. Who do you think? Who do you think would have gotten? Should have gotten their own spinoff instead of Knuckles Tales? Like, did you want the Tales show? No. No, everybody no. wants Knuckles. Who, me? No. no. This is this is this is this is the best it could have been. I think that I just yeah. It's like what you said, Grant. That this is all just kind of like dessert or gravy. Yeah. Where it's like I can't believe this exists. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to see how, and it doesn't matter if it's the worst thing ever. There's still like, you know, four hours of CG knuckles now floating around or whatever. How many minutes he's in this thing? I don't know. Yeah. (laughs) Not four hours, an hour and a half. Right. Isn't that what people say? Like, 147 minutes of knuckles or something right something uh, like that sonic fans are so like little oliver twist orphans with their bowls being like i'm just so grateful we got a little mini series i hey where's mario's mini series <laughs> that's yeah that's right right eh? yeah yeah he doesn't have a six episode of yeah it. where's the princess peach show i don't see it right. yeah. oh my god i would <laughs> Die. I'd be great, but uh, it doesn't exist. I mean, it's crazy. Like, yeah. again, like we're in this kind of, um, I guess you guys would agree with me, this video game adaptation golden age, sort of, in terms of success and, and quality. Um, and it's insane to me that Knuckles is like front and at the front of the line, you know, because it's like, uh, who's, you know, I don't know, like, especially with the popularity of the franchise really waning in the 2010s. This is crazy. It's going to be interesting to look back on because I feel like it's, they're early. They're on the early part of the the upswing of video game adaptations. So it might be something that we look back on later as being sort of like the Sam Raimi Spider Man movies, the X Men, but like the early superhero movies where it's like they're they're not quite the MCU yet, but they've got their own flavor. Oh, I see what you're saying. I, I like what I like what you're you're selling there. That like the best is yet to come, and then a crash, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, because I think the the Sonic project that everybody wants Mm -hmm. is the one that is like way more literally adapted from the games you know people are like well where's the like they they always point to like the unleashed opening right the sonic unleashed opening where sonic is racing across the battleships and then confronts dr eggman gets turned into the werehog it's beautifully animated by the uh marza yeah thank you marza team Mm -hmm. and and it's just strictly from the games it's it's not He's got beige arms. I think fans want the beige arms, true blue right. Sonic, but we're very happy with this alternate universe Sonic because the quality has been pretty good. Right. right. It's it's tricky, though, too, because, like, you know, once you do this Sonic Adventure 2 adaptation, which is definitely happening, like, can you really do it again? Can you shoot Maria two times in theaters? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think you could. I mean, we've... Uh... We got the Phoenix Saga twice, both times. We did. Bad. We did. Uh, so that means they awful, might do it a yeah. third time. So they'll definitely, they'll definitely try a third time. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Who's gonna play Maria? Do they know yet? They do. Yes. There's a little girl. There's a little gal set to play Maria. Right. Wow. And she's little? in on the joke. She's Not posted a human on. Woman? She's, mm-hmm, a human woman. A little. Yeah. Our little no, women. She, I mean, it would have been funny if it was just a CG lady. Uh, <laughs> She's with the like, same eye. She's like 15 or something, though, right? She's like a oh, wow. child actor, yeah. 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 And she knows she's going to be shot. Well, we, that's what we're all waiting to see, Ashlyn. Do they have the guts? Right. Yeah. Which, in Sonic Adventure 2, which this week, Toby Asher, the executive producer of the movies and the Knuckles series, was like, yeah, we're going to be pulling a lot from Sonic Adventure 2. Sonic Adventure 2 does not explicitly show Maria's death. It is no, it's an off-screen link and shot. you miss it, yeah. off-screen yeah. sound effect. And you, you you might not even know that she was murdered. Just you just know that she's not around anymore. 
Right. But it's an easy thing to miss. Uh, so mm -hmm. unless they're adapting the specific scene from the beginning of Shadow the Hedgehog 2005, where it is a bit more explicit, right. which director Jeff Fowler worked on, well, it remains to be seen. That's right. This this is his wheelhouse. This oh, there you go. Knows. See, this is coming home for him. Yeah, Blur Studios, right? That's right. Yeah. Right. Shadow. I think he also worked on 06, right? Or am mm -hmm. I? Yeah. yeah. I think that's right. Well, there, there's, there, there is no version of this scene so far that does not have, like, her getting shot. Like, even in Sonic Adventure 2, there's a very subtle, poorly mixed off-screen shot. In Sonic X, the guy raises the muzzle. He, like, literally yeah. raises the muzzle. And then in Shadow, I think what happens in Shadow, same thing, right? You, you, you definitely, it's more explicit. Right. You, you see the gun, you see her face. Um, I guess yeah. they did, they cut out, like, three seconds where it's like, oh, yep, the bullet has yeah. hit her. Uh, they, should, they should lean into, like, just make it explicit this time. You know what I mean? Like, do a whole Romeo must die, like, X-ray, <laughs> like, bullet. Going in, bullet coming out. Wow. No ambiguity. You know what I mean? No, right. But still classy. Like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you for that history lesson of uh, the times Maria's been shot. I didn't know uh, that. No notes either. Just off the top <clears> of your head. Times, you knew that. All three times. Oh, yeah. It's happened. Right. Yeah. I don't think we, we saw her get shot in Archie. Oh, oh. Um, Did hmm. we? I, I don't think they, they kind of glossed over Maria. You're going to have to Google that one, man. I, I don't yeah. know. I might. That's a, that's a, that's a deeper dive. I don't know how that was staged. <laughs> but it's a comic. You don't see the bullet in motion. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you see the, the motion path of the bullet. <laughs> right. Man, the fans, I, I'm nervous to see Sonic 3 in theaters because I feel like whenever Maria does lose her life, it's going to be a standing ovation. And, and, and people are going to be so confused of like, why why are they cheering for this little yeah. girl getting shot? And it's like, yeah. it's complicated, yeah. but I guess it's not that complicated. It's just fans really wanted to see Sonic taken seriously. Yeah. And this is the way that they feel that that happens. Fan, fans really want to see the scene play out as it was written. I think I think that's really just all it is. It's like a fulfilling of a prophecy. Yeah. 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 Because it, it's like that, that sincere adaptation instead of it being like, oh, the X-Men are wearing leather suits because color right. is the bane of all existence. It's right. like, well, no, you're seeing Captain America holding Thor's hammer and he's actually hitting a giant purple man and you're like okay right we've we've hit the promise i this feel is... like they are going to and, and we should i guess we can move on from maria after this but i feel like <laughs> <laughs> we're renaming the show i feel like that instead of a, a a soldier or you know swat member or gun member raising a muzzle i feel like it's more likely to be an accidental struggle shot mm. in in the movie like mm. gerald goes no and he grabs for the guy's arm they tussle there's a shot and then we see maria like a little bit of blood on her hand you know like look up and bammo like i, I feel like that's bam probably like i think the, the 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 direct violence of raising a muzzle there's no way yeah i i agree i it, i my prediction has always been that they're going to soften it somehow and yeah. that fans that are bloodthirsty for Maria's <laughs> death and guts should maybe just I think if there's if there's a, a gun a bullet and a death involved everyone will be extremely satisfied <laughs> god what is wrong with this fan it's, it's so a bunch dark. of well I mean and this is you know this is the problem with the franchise to me which is just this crazy tonal whiplash of something like this in a game about like for animal people like it's right. well we'll see but it's 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 a lot it's a lot to process which is why it's beloved yeah. as well so uh but you're also right that it's time to move on uh <laughs> this is the main sonic news for the week there are a few other things we'll get to it next week uh there's there's a new right. fan game uh the sequel to srb2 cart is out as of today robotnik right what is it called i think it's called um uh dr robotnik's ring racers, ring racers. Free thing, on windows yeah. and mac yeah. that's pretty exciting i'm excited to check it out it looks it looks great it looks like awesome. I, I watched a little bit of footage it looks amazing yeah it does look good uh i will say there has been a little bit of controversy though involving Wait, tell it. us oh no i like your long sip on your drink after you say <laughs> <that>. like, <laughs> yes. well uh right i guess you know there's been rumblings for this the sequel to uh, come out for a while and, and it came out everyone got excited everyone downloaded it and then were greeted with an hour-long tutorial before you could actually play the game oh an hour to play the racing game like the mario kart clone right what yeah right yeah because it has 
uh, new features, extra moves and items and stuff. They're like, well, we need to te- you need to be taught how to play this. You got to play it an hour. That's funny. And then you have to actually unlock online multiplayer oh. uh, by beating like the first Grand Prix. And then you have to beat three before you can unlock the ability to use mods. Holy shit. So this game has its own like great plateau sort of like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sequence. Like that's amazing. Yeah. So a lot of people got up, uh, got upset at the fact that they have to spend hours before they can just play it online with people. I think everyone was like, we're going to download the new one. We're all going to go online because it is just, you know, cart uh, SRB2 cart two, but it it's more than that. And so the, the devs, gave everyone some passwords so you can skip <laughs> the tutorial and unlock multiplayer or online multiplayer immediately uh, just because it had such an intense backlash. The fact that it was being... That's so funny. Uh, it's also got a story mode and the tutorial oh my God. is part of that story mode where Eggman and Tails have to team up to do something. I don't know. I haven't played it. I, I did see Eggman and Tails on the cover and I was like, that's a choice, right? Why these yeah. yeah, that is strange. And I guess it's maybe not even that surprising to find out that there's all these hurdles because that was also my experience with playing SRB2 in the first place. It's just like it's long. There's a mm. kind of a long tutorial to even begin getting ready to play it and on and on. But OK, whatever. Let's let's uh, let's segue into what we really want to talk about, which is Fantasy Star Online. I do wish Bo was here because I know Bo is also a big PSO fan. uh, And I asked him if he had anything that he wanted to uh, point out for our discussion. And it was that the director of... So first of all, Fantasy Star Online. Ashlyn, What is it? Fantasy Star Online. It came out on the Sega Dreamcast in uh, December 2000. It was a Christmas gift for us all in the year Y2K. Very exciting. The director... I think it's pronounced Takeo Miyoshi. Also, he was, he, he was a uh, designer uh, on Sonic Team yeah, and worked on Burning Rangers. And then this was his debut as director, Fantasy Star Online. So this was during this time period when Sonic Team uh, was diversifying their portfolio of brands. They were Sonic the Hedgehog, Sonic Team. But then in the Sega Saturn era, they made Nights into Dreams. They made Burning Rangers. And then coming into the Sega Dreamcast, Sonic Adventure. And then before Sonic Adventure 2, pow, Fantasy Star Online. You could play online with your friends with a 56K modem, and we did. And did I have a Sega Dreamcast keyboard? Yes, I did. So I could type in IRC chat. And also, I know that my enthusiasm for PSO is is nothing compared to Matt's passion for it. Dwarfed, yeah. Dwarfed. But um, yeah, maybe you could just start by telling us your... Tell us anything you want about Fantasy Star Online, but how you got introduced to it, why it why it dug so deep into into your heart, and uh, yeah, and because David, I know that you're going to be fairly useless here, right? Because you you never played uh, it. a little bit, yeah, yeah. David, you never you never played this, da- David. You had a Dreamcast though, right? I, I did have a Dreamcast. What yes, I will. Happened, I will briefly. Man? Okay, so what happened? Right, uh, I was excited at the idea of it being announced because it was the the whole enjoy four promotion yes. remember the yes. team was like we're making four new games was it choo choo rocket samba de amigo pso yeah and correct right. me if i'm wrong but the sonic adventure 2 demo also came with pso yes i, yes, I have, I have that, commentary right. about that yeah right. the the fourth of the enjoy four was sonic inventor inventor adventure international oh. so they were like we'll count that okay yes. whatever <laughs> yeah right so yeah it 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 came out it had the demo i remember pirating the sonic adventure 2 demo before pso was released so you didn't even buy the game for the demo i well i i got it after the fact i did get the game i got the keyboard but you see the the thing is that to play it online well what sort of internet service provider can you use uh not aol Uh... sega was very clear america online does not it will not let you. I remember this because I remember having to mm-hmm. uh, lobby my parents to drop AOL <laughs> to sign up for Sega Net wow. and have the Dreamcast be our sole internet service provider for about a year. That's that's crazy. We had we had a CompuServe and that was fine. Right. So I did have the game. OK, I turned it on. But because it wasn't online, I kind of got I was like, I don't know what to do with this. Yeah. And turned it off after five minutes and just played the SA2 demo because yeah. it's Sonic. Yeah. Uh, yes. I did try to use Net Zero because people said, oh, well, you know, if you have AOL, you should use Net Zero. It's a free internet service provider. Right. Just plug it in and go. 
never worked. Every single time I tried to use it, it never worked for me. So I was I was off the PSO train before it even began. I just had to look at the sidelines. Yeah, that is a crying shame because I... <laughs> you really you really missed Magic in a Bottle. Um, so yeah, uh, about PSO, this game I I have an unhealthy obsession with. Like I, I had a <laughs> severe addiction to it. I, I I sort of moved from my bedroom into the living room so that I could kind of wake up and play it oh, wow. you know what i mean like and wow. my parents were very supportive of my dreams at the time they totally let me do this but it was like summer too i think or maybe it was christmas break like you said when yeah it was christmas around. yeah but i i got the game uh to enjoy the song adventure 2 demo that's really why i got it like i had followed uh fantasy star online's development uh with magazines and stuff but the the concept of playing online was a little scary to me you know what i mean i i was like oh, i don't know it seems a bit weird playing online strangers who knows Stranger Danger, you know what I mean? It was <laughs> it was the era too, like Y2K, uh, where it was like, there's some creepos out there, kids, mm-hmm. on, on the internet, so you better be careful. So I was I was very cautious about that stuff. But I got the game, and me and my best friend, uh, we played that demo like a million times. We thought it was great. Escape from the City, I think it's a great kind of impression of Sonic Adventure 2, uh, and it was a blast. The logo, it had the old logo. You remember the black and white metal yeah, logo? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, it was just, I, I, I don't know what the perception was at the time, but like the demo was a hit. I thought it was just awesome. And you could play it indefinitely, which was another big thing. So I remember though, we, we kind of got bored of the demo after playing it like 50 times. And we were like challenging each other for our times. And then we were like, wait, this came with a game, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> came with a whole, whole stinking game. But, but you weren't a Fantasy Star fan no. prior to this, no. even though, because no, 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 no. you're somebody that I know is into RPGs in yes. general, but you yes. weren't yet at that Huge time. Huge RPG fan, but I did not grow up with a Mega Drive or a Genesis. So uh-huh. I actually didn't play the original Fantasy Stars. I didn't know anything about it. That's right. All I knew was from magazine scans, which was like elves with lightsabers in space which is probably <laughs> and it was it, it was yeah. an aesthetic thing um very 80s in retrospect like i know yeah. fantasy star is sort of a 90s era franchise but it's incredibly 80s like the, the character design sensibilities like the elf girls they look like they were straight out of an 80s kind of space sci-fi anime yeah yeah they look like dune covers the first one's late 80s yeah you're feel, right yeah so that, and the second that, one might even be 89 or 90 so it is still being developed i guess in you're the right. 80s. It, it, yeah i guess uh, fantasy star 4 is a lot of people's favorites though and that's like a square 1994 yeah game or something right like yeah we're in the 90s we're deep in the 90s at definitely point. definitely but anyway i i never played these because my first console was actually a saturn that's right. I'm remembering the last yeah, time yeah. you were on the show, you were saying right. that Sonic Jam was yep. how you played the Genesis games. Mm-hmm. Right. Yep. I guess that was your introduction to Knuckles. We didn't really talk yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> boy, boy, was he great uh, in that, um, in Sonic R. Uh, but uh, yeah, Fantasy Star Online uh, had no uh, background experience. But uh, I remember my best friend and I, we started playing that evening and we couldn't stop. We were just so intrigued by the world, like the setting. It was like a sci-fi kind of... Uh, um, mystery sort of too was the story so for those who don't know the story of fantasy star line online is very um uh minimal it's very open and it's very kind of like bleak which is that you're you're on a a spaceship like an ark full of colonists from this planet that is uh dunzo you know what i mean they had like you know climate change or a war and all the people have immigrated to this new uh brand spanking new planet they found called regal uh and so there was a ship that got sent called pioneer one and they set up like an outpost and they, they made a call back to Cor- Cor- Corral or Coral, the home planet. And they said, it's all good. You guys can come on over. A second ship full of uh, colonists uh, goes over to the planet um, where they're going to meet up with the, the population of the first you know, arc. And then there's a giant explosion on the surface of the planet and everybody disappears from the first arc. And so you're in space. You and you've got this entire city of people who are all set to start a new life on this planet that has a, a you know an atmosphere that they can breathe and all this stuff and colonists have set up infrastructure and everybody's disappeared. So it's this really incredible hook for a story and you've been hired by the government that's on this spaceship. They're like, we don't know what's going on. We're going to hire you to go down to the surface and solve the mystery of what happened to all those missing people. So if you divorced all of this like video game stuff, it's already a pretty compelling yarn. Like, you're sort of like, what happened to the people? Where did they go? And what ends up, you know, slowly becoming clear is that this planet was was not safe. 
there is an evil, a dark evil that is living under the surface and it sort of ate all the people <laughs> and, and sort of stole their souls away. And that's like the final boss of the game. And it's, it's incredibly fun and compelling. Um, but more importantly, you know, that's the story. So I was hooked by that. I was hooked by the premise and, and it was such a great, you know, I was like, I really was interested in solving this mystery. Like what happened to the people there? But the gameplay loop that they built and Sonic Team were the kings of this, which is basically designing the bare minimum of assets <laughs> to kind of like get use out of over and over again. You'll notice this a lot with Sonic Team games or, you know, even Sega games where you're like, why are there only six racetracks in this racing game? You know what I mean? There's, there's hardly any assets here, but for some reason, so Fantasy Star Online, it came out version one. It only had four levels, which is like, Pretty embarrassing. Like in, in retrospect, you're just like, that's just not a lot of content. There's there was the forest, there was the caves, there was the mines, and there was the ruins. And within those four levels, there were kind of three or four variations of, of maps of dungeons. Um, but it was a paltry amount of amount of content. So what they did that was quite ingenious is that the game had certain elements that were randomized, like item drops and enemy placements and which map variation that you would get that really created a satisfying addictive gameplay loop where and they, they they've sort of like created the perfect balance of you know it always felt like playing the game there was always something around the corner there was always an, a weapon that dropped that was really exciting or an item that you were looking for that was about to, to happen or you were about to level up or you were about to be able to to use a certain mag or item and also this is the kind of game where you could create a character and, and there weren't many of those back in 1999 when this came out um or 2000 or maybe it was 2001 i don't know gonna fact check that but like it was end of 2000 so your okay, memories right so but the idea of creating your own avatar um was quite amazing at the time like i felt like yeah. the games i played where you had to be link from legend of zelda or you had to be sonic or you had to be you know crash bandicoot or banjo kazooie or, or whatever fuck and in this game you could create a character and you could invent your own backstory you know what i mean in fact there were entire like blocks which are these little servers in in the game on the online servers dedicated to you know people who were larping and it was like 2001 or whatever and so this is this yeah. this this game which was heavily diablo inspired the, the team as they were developing it they played a lot of diablo um it was years ahead of its time and i think anyone yeah. who, who played it in 1990 or sorry in 2000 like it was really a magical experience the online was free that's worth pointing out. When you version one, there was no additional charge. The subscription fee came with version two. And that was a little bit down to the naivete of, of Sonic Team and Sega at the time, where they were like, in between version one and two, they realized like, wait, this maintenance is is incredibly expensive. You know what I mean? Like it needs to pay yeah. for itself. So in version two, which was also on Dreamcast, they introduced a subscri subscription fee. And I think it was kind of steep. I think it was like 15 bucks a month, which is pretty fucking crazy. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Especially then. I, I dropped off by that that point. But you know, you're mentioning the character creator and, and I'm thinking to myself that, yeah, you're right. I, I, that, it, I, that may have been the first time in a video game where I created my own character. Right. And the, the options were robust at the time. Like now it's dopey. And now it's like there are three faces and like six hairstyles. But at the time you were like, I could look like Trunks from Dragon Ball Z. I could look like yeah. Sephiroth from Final Fantasy VII. There was a, a color slider mm -hmm. for hair. And I, I think that was pretty, you know, um, revolutionary for the time. Um, but it's, it's also a very simple game. It's very hack and slash. So if you've ever played something like Diablo II or Gauntlet Legends, you sort of know what you're in for, which is just, it's a dungeon crawler. You and three other buddies, you zap down to the surface and you go in these dungeons, you just kill mobs and mobs of enemies um you look for items and then you just do it all over again until you're like level 100 and i i know why i probably spent like 300 hours on the original dreamcast version wow i totally went online i was talking to strangers you know what i mean it was total stranger danger i got a keyboard <laughs> i think my parents when they saw like the format of the game they were just like how is anybody gonna like accomplish anything you know what i mean like creepy in this game that you it was also censored. Yeah. I mean, you couldn't curse. Uh, there was a, a weird international language system that you could talk to people who, who didn't speak English, which, by the way, was one of the demands of uh, producer uh, Yuji Naka at the time. I guess, you know, and, and about a couple of years ago, there were these great interviews that came up. I think they were via one up or something about the 
creation of Fantasy Star Online. And when you hear about how this game was made, it was so kind of like rinky dink and like they had all these crazy demands from, from Yuji Naka who just asked for the most obscene things and the team would just have to do them. <laughs> like, so we were at, they were at the whims of this man who, as you know, is, the, is one of the, the fathers of Sonic the Hedgehog and who was just in charge. Like, you couldn't argue with this guy. So they talked about how stressful it was and how difficult it was. And none of them really understood, like, the kind of magical game they had, they had created. It, it's, it's a, and again, to this day, there have been sequels and none of them have managed to kind of create the perfect, you know, balance of game design and random drops and character customization that the original managed to kind of succeed with. So yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. I, I still play it to this day. You know, I, I play it on my original Dreamcast. I play it on the, the fan servers, the private servers. And it's a game I could just play forever. It's, it's hard to explain, but it just, it got its hooks in me at the perfect time. So wait, you still play to this day online? I still, I still play, baby. And there are still people playing? There are still crazy freaks like me playing this game. Is it fifteen dollars a month still? <laughs> it's, it's no. <laughs> well, it's their their private server, so it's free. Oh. But I I still play it offline on the Dreamcast version because I'm crazy and I'm still nostalgic wow. for like the uh. feel of that stupid Dreamcast controller. I'm also nostalgic for like, and this is crazy. Like nobody cares about this but me. But one of the items, like the broadsword, had an animation that was changed in all iterations of the game except <laughs> version one where the character does like a jumping slash. And I, <laughs> I, I yearn for those little things, those little touches, those, you know what I mean, ex- eccentricities that are, are, are ironed out from future games. So like, I don't know, it's, it, the, the game just casts a spell on me. And it's, it's really funny and sad because the next game was called Fantasy Star Universe. And it was probably one of the most disappointing games I've played in my life. And I think it also came out in 2006, which is a banner Good. year for Sega uh, <laughs> and all these franchises. Games, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm. Real quick, I, w- I would like to know. Um, uh, okay, so I want to know about your character that you yeah. created, and I, and when you go back to play the Dreamcast version, is it still your character from two thousand? No, I, I was constantly. I was also caught in the cycle of recreating characters. Okay. So I would create a character, I would get them to level eighty, and I would start all over again because oh. the first like thirty or forty hours of the game are actually the most exciting, where you're seeing the most kind of character growth. And then once you get to about level 60 or 70 or 80, you get diminishing returns on that excitement. So it's like you get less experience, you find less exciting stuff, your stats don't go up that much. And so like, I really enjoyed the, the opening hours of this game. So I would constantly be remaking characters. I loved playing the hunter, which was like the close range, like sword guys. I loved playing as the robot, the who cast. So Ashlyn, for context, in this game, there were three races and they were all very unique and very interesting. And this is something that gets ironed out in later versions of fantasy star where like in the in this game in fantasy star online if you picked an elf like you're going to be an elf you could use magic but your body was incredibly weak so all of that magical ability came at the cost of your like physical offense you could pick a human and they could use magic but not very well and they could use a sword but like again not very well so you were really middle of the road and if you picked a robot you could not use magic which was like a big deal because like that's how a lot of people heal themselves it's how they added buffs but you couldn't use magic you had to use healing items but you had the strongest like physical offense of all so there was a great kind of you know balance between these three races and you had a completely different experience based on what you picked in the new fantasy star games you can pick a robot and use magic and it just breaks the whole fucking world because i'm like (laughs) robots can't use magic they don't have souls you know what (laughs) i mean you can't do it so so i feel like as time went on, the team sort of lost conviction in their world and making it believable in favor of player choice and flexibility, which, hey, that's an argument. But for me, I really loved how much they committed to the bit with the original game. And it's the original game that we were playing online on the private server, right? That's right. It's a, or it's a version of the original game. It, yeah, it, I, so we're actually playing version four, which is Blue Burst, which was a PC version of Fantasy Star Online that had a whole bunch of like changes and updates and rebalances and stuff. But we're playing sort of like the, the best version, like the most okay. balanced and considered version. There was a version on, on GameCube and Xbox where the game had a completely different new life called Episode 1 and 2. That's the one you had, right? Uh, yeah, I, well, I just picked that up recently to replay it offline because I, I never played episode two. I don't I think I I think I did pick it up for Dreamcast 
when that came out, but I, I think I was kind of over it by that time. I played the first one a lot. Yeah. And instantly I kind of want to, <laughs> you were saying that like, uh, you could interact with people in the lobbies and you couldn't really do anything to it. But I, I remember trying. <laughs> I'm not going to say succeeding. I'm not, I remember yeah. trying there, there to flirt. Symbol, there were symbol chats. Wow. So you, could make, you could make animated emojis <sighs> and, and people made dirty ones, like for sure. Yeah. Whoa. I wasn't making dirty ones, but I was just trying to, you know, if you saw like a, a, a comely Left young bracket, uh, elf. Period. Oh, right elf bracket. Lady, yeah. Left yeah. bracket. Period. Right bracket. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. Yeah. I mean, that was another thing. It was like the Wild West. So I remember playing with these two other guys or girls or whoever it was, who knows, right? I could have been playing with like, you know, the president of the United States for all I knew. Uh, um, so I was or playing with these, or <laughs> himself. Uh, I was playing with these two guys and one of them, so there's three of us, one of them starts complaining about his hemorrhoids. <laughs> He's like, oh, my hemorrhoids are, they're causing me so much pain. I've got all these issues, blah, blah, blah. And the game had basically a uh, private chat as well. So you could like send little messages to each other on the side, like a little rat, you know what I mean? <laughs> so like, as this guy was complaining about his hemorrhoids, I was messaging the other player, the third player. And I was like, Hey, how much you want to bet this guy's a serial killer? Ha, you know what I mean? And then, like, oh, he was like responding to me being like, totes, man, totes. I mean, nobody was, nobody was saying that, that back then, but it was my first taste of like, Holy shit! I am like, yeah, I'm, but I'm like <laughs> gossiping in real time with this guy. You know what I mean? Who like supposedly yeah. is having these these big medical problems? I'm like, and I'm like a like a 12 or 13 year old kid. I now I'm looking back. I'm like, I think that was like a 35 year old man we were playing with, probably. Yeah. It was probably, just, yeah. like, probably yeah. really if, hurting and just wanted to share. He's, right. I mean, but you know, there's a time to share and there's a time to like, you know. Yeah, you know, I don't know that. Yeah, I, I'm not sure the Fantasy Star Online is ever the right place to share about <laughs> that's, hemorrhoids. But that's what was amazing about it is that it could be. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Yeah. yeah. And the community was so nice. Everybody was so sweet. Like I do remember. Oh, uh, I will say this. That was just fucking crazy. So <laughs> in the original game, when you died, you dropped your money and weapons on the flow. Mm -hmm. It was just out there yeah. for anyone to steal. And that was a conscious design choice from Sonic Team, who was like, hey, you know, ups the stakes, don't it? When you die, you drop your money and your weapons. Someone could come by and take it and leave the game, and then you're screwed. But wow. people were so absolutely unhappy and miserable by this decision. They had patched it out by version two. Wow. You couldn't do that in version two because it was just, there was just too much crying about it. And I totally get it, which is like, mm. what do you mean? It makes perfect sense. But it's like, imagine you're little Timmy, you're 10 years old. Okay. And you spend- Or little three, Matt, you're 12 years old. Little Matty. Right. You're and, little Matt, and you you've spend, never had hemorrhoids. You've never had life. hemorrhoids. You, you, the, <laughs> the world is beautiful. It's, it's full of life and promise. And you have a rare weapon that you spent like 50 hours and you found it and it's like your favorite thing. It means more to you than like your grandfather. <laughs> wow. <laughs> something, goes, something goes awry in your play session. Booma hits you in the face. You go down. You're like, ah, damn, I'm out. Well, it's a, no problem. I'll just wait for someone to revive me. But your teammate doesn't revive you. He takes mm. your stuff and he leaves the game and you're never going to see him again. That could happen to a child. Yeah. Yeah. There's <laughs> yeah. some wild west that is... shit. But you're learning about the world, aren't you? Yeah, I guess that's true. <laughs> but I mean, so that, that was gone. I, I understand the decision to patch that out. I totally get it. Totally makes sense. But again, those are the kinds of fun, I will put fun in quotes, fun sure. like design choices that were made with that first game. They were really creating something that they felt was a living, breathing world where it was like there was a thief guild. There was like people who were like, hey, we're just a bunch of thieves, aren't we? Like, we're going to go around. We're going to steal people's items and we're going to talk about it. You know what I mean? Like, but it was like that. That's kind of amazing. Yeah. You know, like that the, they don't have that in games anymore because like, you know, you don't want to create a, a toxic, abusive environment. But man, it, again, it was like the Wild West. Again, this is the era of like, I'm trying to think of like GameCube hadn't come out. PlayStation 2 was just around the corner, but it's like, there were no online games. So this game where you could plug in and go play with people from like Peru, absolutely outstanding, you know? <laughs> yeah, especially if you're coming from, you know, having not played any PC games. Like totally. PC gamers had maybe had some of that, but as a console only gamer, 
Uh, mm-hmm. I had never experienced anything like it. And totally. So Star and Online also, was, mm-hmm. you knew as, as well as I do, PC gamers were like, they're like barely human. You know what I mean? So like, this <laughs> was an the- opportunity yeah. that you could like mix with like actual normal people. You know what I mean? Not like <laughs> people who have been playing Fallout 2, Diablo, and like Command and Conquer or something. You know what I mean? Like, no, no, no. That's that's ridiculous. Oh, you play um, that game on the Saturn. That's what you Oh, that's, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Fancy Star Online had a promotion that was only in Japan where if you pre-ordered it, you could receive special dog tags. Whoa. And, oh, that sounds familiar. Yeah, and a VMU, and a special VMU. And a special VMU. Uh, and I thought you had the dog tags, but I, it must be somebody else. I don't, I don't have the dog tags. Importing games, you know, I'm like 12. I'm not. Right, I, did, right. I did import Pokemon Silver. That was like a big deal. Wow. From like, you know, remember it, in Game Fan at the back? There were these like import stores. We like called them yeah. up and, and ordered a copy of Pokemon Silver so that I could have it two years before everybody <laughs> else had it. Really important for my street cred. Wow. Crazy to live in America. In Canada, we didn't have those. <laughs> 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 we had to wait for our games like the normal people. But also, like the aesthetics of this game were amazing yeah. and they look great. It's got this neon cyberpunk infused with fantasy that like is still not really happening. Not that it should happen, but like they had a very traditional dragon as the first boss of the game. And here you are with like, like a lightsaber. And I just remember being like, this is fucking awesome. You know what I mean? Like, this is such a great combination of things. And again, it ends up trending a little bit more anime in the later installs installments. And like, a little bit away from the grounded sci-fi that they were building with the first game. So by the time you yeah. get to Fantasy Star Online 2 and everybody's in a maid outfit and they've all got like, you know, <laughs> like KFC promotional items, you know what I mean? Like it just, <laughs> just ended up breaking the immersion. I remember, dude, I was complaining on PSO World, which was this old like website for Fantasy Star Online about how the sense of immersion was being broken with, with later games. I was like, I feel like they're not taking the world building seriously anymore. I feel like they just want to make money from like cosmetics and from like stupid tie-ins with like AT&T and KFC. Cause that was happening with like Fantasy Star Online 2 and stuff. And I just remember being like, it's like they don't care anymore. <laughs> I mean, they're just trying to make a buck. You know what I mean? But like at the time I was, I was so invested. I was so invested in their world that they had built. And also listen to this. Here's the end of the story. It's fucking awesome. It's alien. So basically. The, the colonists who went out the first time, they weren't sweet colonists. They were military people. And what did they find on the planet? Fucking ancient weapons and stuff. And they were experimenting with them and stuff. So by the time you show up and you're a bunch of civilians, you find out. Remember Coral, that planet that was all fucked up? Well, there were factions. Like, there was a war going on. And some of the people who were, like, they, they held on to that resentment. They had, like immigrated or whatever they went over to this new planet being like yeah we'll, we'll, we'll show them we'll get the weapons foist you know what i mean so like it's got this great political yummy chewy juicy story like underneath all of that kind of like you know whatever it's like diablo hack and slash and like i really think that like you know there's a great movie or television show to be made you know i mean from that soup base so hey if toby asher or anybody wants to call us up and put it together we'll do it for them you know yeah, I mean, it's interesting too. Like the story, I don't remember being a big part of it. Like when I'm listening to you describe it now, I'm like, oh yeah, I guess that's true because it for me it was very much all the other stuff of just like yeah, getting to interact with the players and the and it was kind of even though like you're right, it's it's paltry compared to today's standards, but at the time it but even now though, right? Like like Fantasy Star Online Two mm-hmm. is the newest one. Right, that comes out in twenty. Fantasy Star Online Two: New Genesis is the new one, which new might Genesis as well be is the newest one. Might as well be Fantasy Star Online Three because it's a complete departure from Fantasy Star Online Two. Yeah, it's very confusing. It's incredibly confusing because Fantasy Star Online Two was Japan only for about ten or twelve years, and then a couple of years ago, it finally came out in the states on Xbox and Steam. Um, and then right after that, they launched New Genesis, which is an open world. Breath of the yeah. Wild inspired. That's the one I played. Yes, and yeah. it's it is not fun. I don't know how no, else to like. Not. Yeah, I don't know how else to describe the game other than like they've completely missed what makes their game fun. But Fantasy Star Online Two had that same issue where it was like it was a hamster wheel of a game where you just went into randomly generated. Everything was random at that point, so 
there was no level design. You just went down, you killed mobs, you leveled up, you went back to the ship. It was also not great. So like the only game that got close to being sort of in the spirit of Fantasy Star Online was Fantasy Star Zero, which was a DS game. Um, and that was pretty good, but nobody played it because it was like, you know, I don't know. Fantasy Star is like small potatoes now. There is a card game too, right? Did you ever play the uh <laughs> I did, episode game? three. Yeah, yeah. I, I, that's a bizarre one. I, I don't know why they made it. Um it's it's basically they took all the assets from Fantasy Star Online and they made a card battler with those same assets. And it is such a low budget game. You play this thing now, there's barely any animation. All the models are lifted straight from Fantasy Star Online episode one and two. But I will say the music, the soundtrack is absolutely extraordinary for some reason. Huh. Is is there important lore and plot in episode yeah, three? Yeah, there is. There is. But it's it's too crazy. It's actually too crazy to follow. It's, <laughs> oh, okay. it's I will say there there are also amazing illustrations for all the cards. It's just really great stuff. But like the lore that gets built actually episode two has quite a bit more lore too of like there was like another experimental facility that they were experimenting with what's called D cells, which are the 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 bio weapons that they found on Raggle. It's, it's alien. It's basically alien. They found these D-cells, and they're implanting them in humans to see, like, what will happen. And that's where, hey, happy birthday, Ashlyn. Happy birthday. <laughs> Balloons go up on Ashlyn's um, screen. Uh, and that's the final boss of episode two, mm -hmm. which is there was this military hero, and they implanted the cells in him. And, like, Resident Evil 2, he turned into this, like, monster. And he had to put him down. So, uh, but the card battler is bizarre. I have no idea why they made that. I would love what to game know. is is it like a con a console game or is it like a physical mm -hmm. nope, it's not it's a physical game. card it's game a, wow for, so for some reason in 2003 card battlers were like all the rage it was like a gamecube like i remember that was, like yugio Yu -Gi -Oh, yeah it, it had to have been yugio yeah. you're totally right it was like pokemon and yugio there was bait and kaitos which was also a card battler yep. there was fantasy star online episode three and i feel like i we're missing another one but card battlers were like sort of in i don't know why yeah Yu-Gi-Oh, probably. Hmm. You mentioned Diablo. Is there, are there any other uh, more contemporary games that you find scratch the itch with PSO for you? Or is it kind of so unique of a thing that that's to answer the question I'm answering, asking you to me, PSO feels very singular. Yeah, it, it was very much like a specific time in the development of online gaming. Yeah. And it it's not so easily recreated now so it's when those private servers uh we discovered that those private servers were up that was so exciting because it was like oh i, I didn't think this experience was even possible anymore yeah it, it really feels like if you were an amateur baker and by some wizardry you made the best tasting cookie ever made and then you were like shit shit how did i do that and like you can't you can't recreate mm -hmm. it like what they made back then was just so special and of the era and of the specific group of people that they had and those same people would go on to create the sequels. Um, but I will say there's a lot of comparison drawn between uh, Fantasy Star Online and Monster Hunter um, because Monster Hunter also had a mission-based structure where you and three other buddies would go down to the surface and like do the quests, and then you would go back home and sort of get your gear together. So that was similar. And also the weighty kind of focused combat of both Monster Hunter and Dark Souls has similarities between... Fantasy Sister Online, where it's that school of thought where if you've committed to the action, like hitting the button to make a sword slash, you can't cancel out of it. So you're sort of stuck with the choice. That's very much the kind of game that Fantasy Star Online was, which I think a lot of people would say before Dark Souls came out and sort of made it popular, people would describe it as clunky, where it's like, eh, mm, mm, eh. Yeah. Uh. You know what I mean? Like that was the whole gameplay loop for Fantasy Star Online. It was very, very deliberate. Very, it wasn't flashy at all. It wasn't like Devil May Cry. There were no, and that was something that, that got introduced to Fantasy Star Online 2 that a lot of people like, but I don't, which is like air juggling, like launchers, air juggling, combos. Well, even things like dodging or blocking yes. aren't in, like, so to avoid an enemy, you have to like hit, walk to the other corner reapproach hit yes. walk to the yes. yeah yes like, and it, it also had up. this ridiculous thing where there was a hallway and then there's a room and every time you go yeah. back in the hallway the the cpu is like ah, they left the room and then like turn around and then you like run back in and hit them again <laughs> like in the back <laughs> so it was 
it was it was the kind of game that you could sort of um game as well that like but people loved that they loved finding all these exploits and sort of getting to know the game and the combat um other things that are probably similar are anything that's like squad based like probably i haven't played hell divers but i watched some footage and i was like oh it's similar where it's like you and three buddies Mm -hmm. getting dropped into some scenario and having to like accomplish some goals so like any game that is very small like that but something like world of warcraft or final fantasy 14 is not like this at all yeah i yeah i do think the limited scope of the original pso is like a big part of its appeal yeah and other so other other noteworthy things about fantasy star online sort of to wrap up i guess is the music is it absolutely incredible like the soundtracks it's very ambient you know what i mean so it's very electronic very funk and very ambient and that created a very, very unique kind of like soundscape for this series that I really, I still listen to the music. Um, it's really amazing stuff. I just uh, side chatted to Ashlyn. This guy's a serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you guys about my hemorrhoids. Does, oh my God. I will say while you were all playing Fantasy Star Online, the rest of us girls were playing Neopets. Mm. Uh, so... It is interesting that like early online is exciting era. And I think part of the thing that really helped it was the fact that it was free. Like oh, my parents yeah. would never have let me pay oh, $15 a month no, no, no. for some thing. No, totally. Like that was subscriptions were not, they're much more prevalent now, but like back yeah. then, like subscribing to something, like giving your credit card to some rando online. Like oh, even putting your credit card in. That was a big no-no. Yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah. yeah. That felt like the end of it. And, and I think that came with like version two on the Dreamcast, right? Yeah, version that two. Was, version two, there was yeah. version three. Um, another uh, online game of the era was Ragnarok Online. I don't know if you guys ever... Oh, I, rem- I haven't heard that name I, in a thousand years. That, that was a, yeah, that was another extremely popular... It was a Korean-developed game, I believe. And it was another... I think we were just all enchanted to have essentially chat rooms pseudo chat so rooms with, with avatars that you could kind of go and muck around in that was sort of the vibe so i, I remember ragnarok was a contemporary um but yeah yeah it was and and in, in, in the the gamecube version version uh episode one and two had split screen and they did sell a broadband adapter for gamecube but it was pretty much only for fantasy star online there was yeah was there a single other game that had online functionality for GameCube? Uh, Maybe I don't think so. Usually, but but yeah, it generally is known as like being only for PSO, yeah. the broadband adapter. I can't think of any. There was an insane yeah. GameCube keyboard made. Ashlyn, have you seen this thing? No. Oh, I kind of want to get that. It's awesome, dude. Please look at a photo of a GameCube keyboard controller. This thing's out of control. Yeah. <laughs> so stupid i kind of want to get it because it i don't know why i would use it but. i kind of want to i never had it you mean they didn't make very many so but yeah i always kind of wanted it i um uh, i had a, a keyboard adapter sort of pc keyboard that i could plug into the gamecube so i played that one online too but also i played uh split screen and you could it was really the utility was you could bring your characters to your friend's house mm. and play together and you could take that same character boom pop them online talk about hemorrhoids or whatever yeah Hammerhead should be like a core part of any online game. I think <laughs> that the uh, the the split screen, the co op, the offline. That was the reason that I got the that I said to purchase the game on GameCube now in the 2024. Well, I had I had some Nintendo Nintendo only friends. All they had played was Legend of Zelda. Yeah, they were they were really good friends of mine. They were these two twins, um, and I was like, Fantasy Star Online, you gotta try it. And they were like, I don't know, is that kind of like a Sega thing? And I was like, No, 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 listen, listen, listen. You're going to really like it. It's, it's like Zelda, but you get to make your own character and have your own adventure. And they were like, that sounds impossible, but okay. And they uh, like adored it. They were obsessed. I think they got to like level 90 before me or something. And I was like, whoa, you guys went hard into this. They were like, yeah, it's fucking amazing. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, felt like, I felt like it was really great to be on the GameCube and to be on Xbox uh, because they had Xbox Live. You could do audio chat and all that stuff. So I think that Fantasy Star Online really did find a new audience after the Dreamcast. Um, And to be fair, as much as I don't like Fantasy Star Online 2, I do believe it made a lot of money for Sega and continues to be one of their pillars in terms of like revenue. So like that's worth Hmm. mentioning is that, okay, Fantasy Star Online, 
It's a bit different now. It still makes them gobs of cash, probably more than it ever did back when it was a good game. Uh, but <laughs> it's still, it's still very much alive. And, you know, I really hope that it makes a comeback. I know they have to invest in new Genesis for a while because they made it and they spent all this money on it. So they have to try to make it work. So Godspeed to them. But I really hope one day we'll get back to the kind of smaller dungeon crawlery, hanging out with your buds vibe. You know what I mean? I, I don't want, yeah. I don't want another dress up simulator with devil may cry combat because here's the <laughs> here's the truth you guys here's the truth right here's a truth bomb for you if we are all dante from devil may cry none of us is it's like the incredibles if we yeah. can all if we can all do this if that's we can the all, hottest take dude if we can all perform air launchers and we're all flipping and spinning and shooting our guns and like like wearing our made outfits none of us is special sure you know what i mean you have to have specific roles that you can sort of like imagine yourself almost LARPing with it. Like this is a real world that we live in and there are rules where the androids can't use magic and the elves are all weak. <laughs> you know what I mean? And like, I don't care yeah. what you want. I want to make an android who can cast yeah. spells. I don't care what you want. That's not the rule. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's not yeah. like what the universe is like. And I, I totally get, again, player choice is very important, but you can still have player choice within parameters that makes the game fun. Yeah. Uh, Wikipedia is telling me that Fantasy Star Two, uh, Fantasy Star Online Two, has made almost one billion dollars. One billion dollars. Wow, that's a lot that's of money. A, that sounds like a lot. That sounds like a lot. Uh, I, I, yeah. I've never made a billion dollars. <laughs> I've never, I, I, well, I feel like that. That was the whole thing. Is that with these um, free to play games, Fantasy Star Online Two is free to play. There were these whales who were just spending thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars that would basically make it all viable. You know what I mean? So like I played hours of Fantasy Star Online 2, never paid a goddamn cent. So, yeah. <laughs> anyway. You, you sort of answered it, but I, I am curious to give you the prompt one more time, which is, uh, so, you know, what, what, what you hope for the franchise next is a return to the original back to basics kind of approach. And then maybe, like you mentioned earlier, it would be cool to see an adaptation in some form. Would that be... Yeah. So I, I mean, I would love a TV show. I think the, the, the mystery aspect that I've pitched to you guys would work as a television show. If you've got four characters who are sent down to the surface of this new planet that was supposed to be Eden and everybody's gone, you'd be like, what happens next? You know what I mean? You'd be really invested. I feel like it'd be just a good sci-fi show in terms of what they can do with like the franchise. I think, you know, and this, this is whatever, cause they're making however much money they are off of it right now i think they need to look inward and be like what the fuck like what are we even trying to make here you know what i mean like what experience are we trying to deliver i would love something that is a little bit more like we're back to corridors we're back to going underground we're, we're a small group of friends who are stuck and like are trying to get to the end of this labyrinth together and that it's going to take teamwork and the combat is difficult and and arduous and deliberate and we can't flip and jump and scoot and dive and you know what I mean? And do these, I feel like Japanese games, they, they have a habit of prioritizing coolness over, you know, grounded functionality and balance. So it's like they want to make players feel cool, but then at the cost of like, okay, how are we balancing this game around the fact that your character can infinitely air dash, you know? Yeah. So that's what I'd hope. I, I want more grounded meaty sci-fi, but they'll, Grant, they will never do it. They will never do never it. Never say right. never. There's no reason to do it. You heard that you heard you read it one billion dollars. They will never go back to this. There's there's mm. no reason unless some crazy person like me is like in charge and is like, let's go back to when this thing made no money. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah, maybe you can do it if for like uh maybe the maybe a fantasy star online mania team can manifest yeah and, i sort uh, of you know i heard i've always heard rumblings every few years about like people considering sega considering porting the original fantasy star online to like switch or steam or something like that but the reality too is that that would involve maintaining a server and that's again they'll just ah, there's just no yeah gain in in there for them you know what i mean it just doesn't make any sense yeah. but i i would love it if they brought the original back so that people could experience the addictive nature of what they created in 2001 but I guess, you know, we've got the private servers. So if you're really curious, I think it's really easy to get started and to try the game for yourself. Just know it's very clunky. Like that's objective. 
it's an objectively clunky game. Well, speaking of objectively clunky, we are rapidly approaching running out of time for this show. <laughs> so I am going to make a clunky segue uh -huh. to giving Ashlyn the spotlight for any hot takes that you may have, and then we will wrap up for this week. Speaking of hot takes, I thought you were going to end that sentence with, speaking of objectively clunky, to my wife. <laughs> wow. Ashlyn. Why would I ever say that? Good Why Lord. would I ever? That's a good one, actually. I should have said that. Yeah, I love early internet days. I do feel like one of the things that is tough about it is I just don't think that we can return to that carefree element because there's simply too many people on the internet. There's right. just too many. Right. That was the other exciting thing of the time at the time too, is like, what an exclusive club. Not many people right. are online. Not many people have the Dreamcast. Yeah. Not many people have this game. This is partly why I haven't felt anything since 1998. You know what I mean? Like yeah. all the mystery is gone. The magic is gone. There's too many people. You know, it's too crowded. Yeah. That is the hottest take of all. I have not. No, my hot take. Oh, no. <laughs> so uh, uh. I was invited on this pod to give a hot, because I, uh, earlier this week on the uh, pod, the Sonic Weekly Discord, uh, we were doing tier lists mm. of our Sonic games. Contentious. And, yeah. and yeah, my tier list was called Based, I think. Um, <laughs> Can we look at it? Is there like... Yeah, I... uh, well, yeah, yeah, I... let me read it out for you. Um, so my S tier is Sonic Adventure, Sonic Adventure 2, and Sonic 2006, which were super, super fun. My rank A are Sonic Colors and Sonic Forces, both pretty fun games. I liked making my own character in Sonic Forces, mm. and I liked that he <laughs> got to change into little outfits. Rank B, uh, Sonic Frontiers. I didn't really play that game, but I did watch Grant play it, and it was B for boring. Uh, mm, wow. Pretty... <laughs> wow. Wow. And we're just blowing past that you had Sonic 06 at the, in the top tier? In, that, in S tier, wow. I, I was going to come back. I was like, let's, let's, let's get yeah. it all out first. Let's the get the okay. This is just okay, my sure. emotional, you know, with a tier list, you've got to go with your emotional core. <laughs> um, so in C rank, I put Chaotix because me and Grant opened it up and we played for five minutes. And I was like, this seems kind of fun. C for Chaotix, yeah. C for Chaotix. And then Sonic R, which I like that Tails doll. I think that's fun. I wish we would bring that back. Yeah, great character design. Yeah. <laughs> uh, rank D, Sonic the Black Knight. We've been playing that. Um, I don't really know how to play still. But I have been playing Sonic does. and the Black Knight. And then Sonic Generations uh, got bumped up because I like the little Sonic, classic Sonic. I like his cute little face. Right. Uh, and then in rank E, <laughs> this is, I guess, where it got a bit unpopular, was I put <laughs> Sonic the Hedgehog. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 and Sonic Mania. Very brave. Not even on the list is Sonic 3 or Sonic and Knuckles. I forgot you about those. You, well, you've never played them. Yeah. That's rank, that's rank F, right? F. You, you, you very much dislike the 2D games and you love the 3D games. Love, uh, uh, before, yeah. before we start, I just want to say the Sonic Adventure logo is so good. Sonic Adventure 1. Oh, yeah. yeah. So it's good. It's so good. Like, I, I was just playing Sonic Adventure 1. And I was just staring at that logo and how to kind of like, it's got that early 2000s graphics. It's like, there's like rock texture and sky texture, but it's like, it just, it works. It's so beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And I think they lost it for Sonic Adventure 2. Like, I oh, do yeah, think they were like, oh, we'll go back to the old. It's like, no, you got to like. Oh, no, it's bad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When I first saw your tier list, Ashlyn, I, I thought maybe you were just ranking the logos. <laughs> 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 All but right. no, you 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 put thought into it, and um, and those are your opinions. And I mean, what, what can I say? Tell us about 06, though. Tell us tell us about why 06 is an S tier. I think what happened for me is that I only really started enjoying the Sonic experience when we were playing Adventure. Mm, yeah, and I think that I enjoy games that are don't work, but in a funny way. Yeah, that makes sense. Like, it's I like think that, movie. I think that, yeah, it's like a bad movie, which I think I also really like bad movies because I, I appreciate the trying of it, like oh, yeah. the earnest trying. Oh, and they were trying. And like, oh, man. And they were trying and like, it's, it, there's some, and it's just like, it. they didn't get a chance to fix it. 
and it's just kind of fucking you just got to go through it totally totally <laughs> yeah and i think that but that it also has a lot of personality too right like it a lot does of, yeah a lot of charm luppy luppy man <laughs> it swings a lot and i think that that i like like the one side quest where the guy is just like you're doing math with like the boxes <laughs> <laughs> and the loading guy. screen is like so long but it's like i like that they swung for that <laughs> that terrible counting arithmetic box game you uh, like i forgot yes. all about that i can't believe you remember that oh my how God. many boxes are there well, it's, it's, you know some of them are stacked in front so you gotta yeah you gotta, you gotta think three-dimensionally I, I've heard, I've heard, heard, yeah i've heard this a lot that like mediocrity is not the enemy boredom is yeah you know what i mean where it's like you would rather have an exciting disaster than like kind of a solid or mediocre product in front of you and i i totally understand that and respect it because it's like dude if we're gonna go down let's go down in flames you know what i mean yeah like, and i feel like oh six disaster <laughs> dude, 06, you know when they finished the mixing on that and they put that song at the end sweet 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 for like akon remix do you think they were just like and now the cherry on top you know what i mean yes <laughs> oh man we should have that as the outro and they just didn't have time to check their work before they like absolutely not like they were like oh. they immediately yeah. started burning the day oh, and then, and, like they were like we yeah. gotta go that was me in college yeah seriously like <laughs> when you turn in a paper and you're like maybe it's brilliant yeah like you know what i mean like perhaps it is but then like it's yeah. Not. yes yeah it's schrodinger's essay until it gets graded who knows yeah, if it's yeah, brilliant yeah, nobody yeah. knows right maybe it's just maybe i'm the voice i'm the new voice that everybody needs right now i don't remember writing it it was an all-nighter but maybe god is talking through me and i've i've mentioned this on the podcast before my first experience at, of sonic the hedgehog was at the dentist's we had the game in a cabinet we, you could only play, I only ever played the first fucking level before they went and pulled my teeth out. Yikes. Because there was too many teeth in my mouth. Oh my. So it would be like, I would play Sonic and then I would go home in pain. Oh boy. And like, that's my Sonic introduction. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll get more. I think it's, I, I just struggle, I think, with 2D platformers of like, just not feeling good at it. Sure. Uh, so fuck them. Yeah. <laughs> so, so okay, let's wow. let's get to brass tacks though. Why is Sonic Adventure One ahead of Sonic Adventure Two? Oh, I think I just slid them in that order. But also, Sonic Adventure, I think, was the first game where I was like, "This is super fun to play." Yeah, it is. that was the first one that we played together. Oh, wow. This all started because you were you were like, "What's Shadow's backstory?" Mm -hmm. So we played through. Yes, yeah. and I willingly played it. Do you need to play Sonic Adventure One for that? Well, no, but you don't, you don't, we don't want to start with Sonic Adventure 2. You were like, okay, first you got to play Sonic Adventure 1. Right. Though. <laughs> it, it, sets up, yes. it sets up the world so you can it understand does. Shadow. I think, I'm pretty sure after Sonic Adventure, he was like, try playing Generations. And I was like, I hate this. Yeah. yeah. I don't like it. That's right. Yeah. It's too fast. You got yeah. you to gotta start slower. Yeah. And Sonic Frontiers, you think I would like, because I like 3D Sonic, but it's just too sad. It's, it's just simply sad. too sad for me. It's a bit sad. Right. Well, thank you, Ashlyn, for your hot takes. Matt, thank you very much for your enthusiasm of Fantasy Star Online. I want to play it now. I need help, yeah. guys. I need help. Yeah. I need and help. we're going to toss it to David to uh, take us out, and uh, that'll be the show. Thank you. Oh, wow. That's right. <laughs> it is the end, but it's also a beginning. I'm not sure what's beginning, but I bet it's something good. I really have nothing planned, and I feel like I have even less planned this time around. But that's be okay, because I think that's the mission statement of Sonic Weekly, which you've listened to another episode of. You've heard some dulcet tones, and there's just this little bug crawling on the wall near me. It's really throwing me off. We need optimal conditions for David's outro. <laughs> <laughs> That's Another right. living creature cannot <laughs> exist in David's space. <laughs> it's not. Hey, look, if you've enjoyed what you listen to, and why wouldn't you? I think we ha we've all had a, a, a lot of fun, a lot of good times. And what you can do, if you haven't already, is subscribe to the podcast using your pod catcher of choice, be it Apple Podcasts, be it Spotify, be it Podcast Addict, which, of course, is our open source friend. You can just look right into their code and know how they're distributing. But if you don't want to deal with any catchers at all, 
you can always subscribe to us on YouTube. Whoa, whoa, there's a lot of likes going on. That's right. On YouTube, you can like, you can comment, you can subscribe. It's at Sonic Dash Weekly. You can't forget the at and can't forget the dash because it'll take you somewhere else. <laughs> Uh, hey, you can contact the show. You can email us at sonicweeklypodcast at gmail.com. Let us know what's on your mind. Let us know what you think of Fantasy Star Online. Tell us if you played it at the time. Tell us if you only played it way after the fact. And, and hey, if you want to join the Discord, you email us, ask for that link. You can talk to some like-minded Sonic fans and maybe you'll find people who want to play PSO with you. We can start a resurgence. Uh, we can make a chat room call. Play PSO, please. I'd like to maybe. Oh, yeah. Should thank Jack of Old Games for doing the YouTube footage. Gotta thank Smoothies, who's the one who does the edit. Uh, I apologize in advance for this outro, Smoothies. You, you can fix it in post. Thanks once again to our guest, Matt, for, for, for bringing the love. Bringing, bringing the online. My pleasure. Right. Uh, yes. Thank you to the wife of the podcast, who's only the wife of, of one person, who is Grant. <laughs> but I think Grant is the podcast. Like he, no. you, you embody the spirit of the podcast. Like before you were born, podcasts didn't exist, right? Thank you, David. Thank <laughs> you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.